I just want to keep the right perspective. I've got something that I love. He is doing a great job. Thank you, DA. And here's a look at some numbers for Ingles. And guys, I think the best way to measure his performance these last 10 games is his effective field goal percentage, which has improved a sign that his game is in much better shape than it was not too long ago. So the New York starting five, they've got Taj Gibson, Barrett is out there with Peyton, then it's Marcus Morris, and it's Randall in at the power forward position. And for the Jazz, Mitchell is out there with O'Neal. And it's Rudy Gobert. Then there's Boyan Bogdanovich. And it's Ingles in at the small forward. About this time of the year, we hear uh, early talk about end-of-the-season awards. When you're thinking about who you'd vote for MVP or whatever, Doris, uh, when do you start giving consideration to those topics? You know what's fascinating, Kevin, is where all the major awards are considered, particularly the MVP, it feels like there's a narrative that develops back when the season starts. The key as a voter, I think, is to sort of eliminate the noise, look at the numbers, consider the success of teams, and make your decision from there. You've got to make sure you're really doing your research. And sometimes, am I right, it comes down to the final couple days of the regular season before a voter like yourself knows for sure. Kev, I have cast my MVP ballot on the last possible day in each of the last three years. Wow. Yeah, this looks like a pregame shoot-around with all the threes they're allowing. That's tipped. Fast break. Here they come. Here's Mitchell and the Jazz. Another three. Well, we talk about Donovan Mitchell as an exceptional two-way talent. No better example than right there. Peyton passes to Gibson. Looking to end the run. Here's Randall. A second chance effort. Gobert pulls it in. That's not the type of opportunity he fails to convert very often. And O'Neal gets it to go. Impressive. Five straight makes. Love the play calling here. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. They couldn't put the pieces together losing the last matchup with the Lakers. And missing your free throws usually changes the complexion of a game. Certainly did in that one. You know this, Greg. Nothing gets a crowd into the game more than a bunch of missed free throws. That's one of the worst things you can do on the road. And out of bounds as Utah gains possession. Yeah, simply stated, you have to take care of the basketball, and they don't on that possession. Here's Mitchell. That ball. Nice feed that time from Bogdanovich. 12 points for Donovan Mitchell. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. And another turnover here by New York. Still without a basket in the game. Here's Mitchell. He had 19 points in the win against the Pelicans in New Orleans. It was never all about himself. He came away with a lot of assists in that game and just kind of kept everybody in the mix. Here's Peyton following the basket by Donovan Mitchell. Can't connect from short range. Well, conversions have been a problem. 0 for 4. And the Jazz, another 3. Yeah, those are starting to add up, guys. Of their last five baskets, three have been tripled. Some nice passing by New York here. Here's Barrett. It's blocked. Did you guys just see that? Listen, Bogdanovich can guard, but shot blocking? Wow. Yeah, that's two bombs in a row from long range. And here's Peyton. He'll bring it up for the Knicks. This is their first chance to take a look at the Jazz this season. And this game will be half of the contest they'll play against each other this year. It's an interesting matchup. Two teams that don't know each other all that well. Separate conferences. We'll see which one can dictate the pace early. Donovan Mitchell really making a difference here. Well, I think this is a necessary timeout so they can figure out a way to limit the impact this guy's having from three-point range. They've got to dedicate more resources to their perimeter D.
And looking now at some numbers here for Randall. Over the last month, he has been spectacular. He's putting up about 21 points per, 10 rebounds, and 3 assists. And he does the heavy lifting on the glass, throwing himself into the rebounding battle with just complete effort. Well, you get the feeling he believes every rebound should be his, and most of them are. This guy is putting up tremendous numbers. Mitchell's shot is good. The defense a step slow, and you can see the results. And the playmaking of Joe Ingles, such a valuable asset for the Jazz. Well, Greg, they've needed more shot creation. And his growth in that regard, especially operating in the pick and roll, such a big lift to their offense. And here are the Knicks now. Here's O'Neal. And again, it's Utah. And you can't help but pick their defense apart. They're completely in disarray. Poked away. Here we go, all alone. And again, it's Utah. They've wasted no time settling into their offense. The Knicks have gone 0 of 5 here to start the game. Rough start for them. Now here's Peyton. Coming in off a 12-point game, his last outing. How about the soft release on the floater by Alfred Payton? To me, that's a necessary skill for a point guard in today's NBA. Morris against Ingles.